It was the 8th of February 1942 that I was shot down. Uh, I remember the date well because it was the date before my 21st, 22nd birthday. And uh, four of us had been scrambled after some 109s in the area. And uh, my leader was Jerks McLean. And uh, we got separated somehow or other. And <clears throat> Uh, I was hunting around uh, looking for him, he was looking for me obviously, and I committed the cardinal sin and that was I flew straight and level for longer than about half a minute, or oh, quarter of a minute really, because uh, while I was looking around for him, I uh, uh, sort of looked down and he was coming up towards me and uh, as I looked at him, I suddenly saw these 12 coils of smoke coming up towards me and it was jerks and I thought he was firing at me. Actually, he was firing at a 109 which was busy shooting at me and uh, all I felt was uh, something poking in my back and there were a lot of bangs and the engine started burning. Uh, jerks quite rightly was shooting not at me, it just looked that way. He was aiming off in order to put a squirt between me and the 109. I don't know what happened, whether he hit him or not, but uh, I heard the bangs and the engine started burning and I decided to get out, but then the flames went out, so I stayed put and decided to put it down on Gazala. It was one of the Gazala aerodromes. And um, so I went on down, uh, came into land. There were no flaps because the um, system had been blown away and there were no brakes either. So I landed and as I was running along, there were a lot of blue lights went past my left wing tip. Uh, he obviously fired again. Whether he fired to miss me, I don't know, but they were definitely uh, at my wingtip as they bounced. That was his tracer. Because normally they were red, red. You know, I've been shot at before and you've got these red ping pong balls. But strangely enough, these were blue. They were sort of greeny blue color. And um, I got to the edge of the aerodrome and uh, having no brakes, it belted on. And my uh, one wheel went into, my left wheel as so happened, went into a, a bit of a hole and the machine swung round. And as it stopped, I looked up to my right and he was on his way down again. So I got shot of my uh, straps and my parachute harness and I went over the side of the, you know, onto the wing and fell down on that and then hooked the leading edge and pulled myself up behind the engine. I thought that would take anything that came at me. And as I watched, uh, the blue lights again went under the nose of the aircraft and I felt myself hit in the hip. Um, once he passed, I slid off and there was a gun emplacement. It was about 50 meters away, I suppose, and must have been about four or five feet high and made up of the local rock and I belted off into that and he came down again and he flamed the aircraft. And so um, when it was over he pushed off and I got up and walked to the aeroplane and uh, it was Billy Herberts which I had used. He was my mate in one squadron. It was called the Glamour King and anything less glamorous at that stage uh, had to be seen to be believed. But um, as I was walking towards it, a South African armored car came out of the local bush and came up to me and I was very angry. I asked him why the hell they didn't fire at this bod because I, I mean, he was going straight at the machine and straight up. And they quite rightly pointed out to me that he had 20 millimeter and they'd only got a thin side on the army car. If it had been a tank, it might have been a different... Anyway, they uh, collected me. Uh, I, out of the rubbish, I 
picked up what was left of my parachute and the buckle. I've still got the buckle and it's got uh, gouge marks in it, fully, clo uh, fully open, but um, where I turned the knob and hit it to release it. And, um, but they've got the gouge marks where some of the bullets had yeah. gone. I subsequently found reading Fighters Over the Desert, a book that uh, his name was Schultz and that uh, he eventually, I think, got 51 destroyed. So I was shot down by a master.